from David Stanton Field in Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's the home opener for the Chattanooga Red Wolves taking on forward Madison FC in its first ever USL League One match. Presented by Transcard Global FinTech Platform. So delighted to have you with us on a gorgeous night from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Red Wolves have already played one game so far this season. Taking a look there at some of the notable additions. Stephen Beatty, formerly in Europe, comes over, scored the team's first ever goal on Saturday in a loss to North Texas. Eamon Zayed, a guy who has won a USL championship at Indy 11. And on the other side for forward Madison FC, a club with some youth, but Don Smart, first ever player to sign, 31 years old, looking for a fresh start with Madison. And then Carl Schneider, homegrown talent, played for UW in Madison, returns after some time in Sweden. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and first kick next from Chattanooga. Back in Chattanooga, Tennessee, just moments away from kickoff in the USL League One home opener for the Red Wolves. Starting lineups presented by Nourish Point, fueling the starting 11 for Chattanooga. The Red Wolves in goal, Alex Mangles, Jonathan Caparelli, one of the defenders for this group. Looking for a rebound after a loss to North Texas, Stephen Beatty and Eamon Zayed. Up top, two players who have played together will look for some magic up top. And on the other side for forward Madison Football Club in its first ever USL League One match, the wait is finally over. Dane St. Clair on loan in net tonight for the Flamingos. Nunez in the middle, Toye up top hoping that he can find a home here in Madison and create some chances to score in front of net. Let's take a look at tonight's injury report presented by Tralia Health. No injuries for Chattanooga and no injuries for forward Madison. Again, this is just the first game of the year for forward Madison and the second game of the season for Chattanooga. Healthy squads for both sides and for Madison. This is a team who has just continued to add players to the roster on loan. A relationship with, of course, Minnesota United Football Club. And so we will see a handful of players on the pitch tonight who could be representing in the MLS very shortly.
Good crowd filing in tonight in Chattanooga. First game at home for the Red Wolves playing their games this year at David Stanton Field at Chattanooga Christian School while the city is building a 5,500 soccer specific stadium for use next season. Our referees tonight, Danielle Chesky, the head referee, followed by our assistant referees, Jonathan Fogo and Tiffany Turpin. It's a pleasure for me to be here, and I can't thank you enough for coming to a little photo op here before we get things kicked off. Like to the the first season of USL League One, and of course, First year that Chattanooga Enzo, has a team in the USL. And Tony. And as a way to say thank you for the vision Bob and his family had for soccer and our great city, we'd like to present he and his family a framed jersey from our inaugural season. Thank you. Red Wolves 0-1 in league play after a loss at North Texas last weekend. They give up two own goals. And head coach Tim Hankinson said he was disappointed with how his team played against North Texas. Felt like the training in the build-up to that opener was much better than the performance on the pitch when it came time for game time. Looking for a rebound here after a good week of training. Tim Hankinson, of course, a legend in the American soccer community. This is the 16th team that he has coached. Trying to build a strong club in Chattanooga. And on the other side, forward Madison FC with an affiliation this season with Minnesota United. FC, so getting more players in on loan from the MLS side than in years past. An intriguing matchup tonight. A lot of youthful players on the side of Madison just because of that affiliation. And for Chattanooga, they've really tried to build a core of veterans who have won championships in different levels, be it in Europe or in the USL. Of course, Tim Hankinson, the head coach for the Red Wolves, won a USL championship, or at the time, North American Soccer League championship within the 11, and we are underway. First match at home in the history of the Chattanooga Red Wolves. Chattanooga in the all red, Madison in the all white. Dane St. Clair on loan from Minnesota United in net, the 21 year old for Madison. And for Chattanooga, the 25 year old Alex Mangles from Lafayette, California. Wow, 
crowd still trickling in here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Community so excited to be part of USL League One, to have a team that they can get behind and support. And of course, up the road in Nashville, they've built a great supporter group in Chattanooga figures to do the same in its inaugural season. Connor Doyle, a man with plenty of MLS experience. Alefi Dos Reyes, Vangel Zaguro, Here's a ball. Up ahead. Jeffrey Michotti, first shot of the night. First look at Alex Mangles of Chattanooga. Spent the last two seasons for Portland Timbers USL Championship side. Six clean sheets, 15 appearances for the 25-year-old Mangles. Free kick opportunity for Andrew Mullen. That last season with Atlanta United, USL side. There's a potential chance early. Richard Dixon coming up from the back line. In that 3-2 loss to North Texas, Chattanooga, of course, giving up the two own goals. But they tried to press early and didn't have success. And as the game wore along, according to Tim Hankinson, felt like his club sort of got too compact in the middle after the first 20 minutes. And that allowed for North Texas to sort of spread them out and get more opportunities. Wants to see his side be more possessive-minded tonight. Shot sails high from Eamon Zayed. First look at him, Libyan national team member from 2011 to 2015. Our first corner kick tonight for Chattanooga. It'll be Stephen Beatty to take it. The 30-year-old from Dublin, Ireland. Scored the franchise's first goal last week. Back post and punched out by Dane St. Clair. And now perhaps a counter. If Madison can get, get organized. Quick throw in coming for the Flamingos. Back to Wyatt Omsberg, former Dartmouth standout, all Ivy Leaguer. Got a restart coming. Referee Daniel Chesky giving it back to the Red Wolves. At least in these opening five minutes, the Red Wolves have really maintained the bulk of the possession. And anytime Madison has had it, it's been very direct, not a, much, not a lot of organization from the back. Beatty, wrestling with it, Don Smart, the left back out of Kingston, Jamaica for Madison. Why to Carter Manley?
And back to Dane St. Clair. Started every game last season for the Maryland Terrapins. Won a national title in 2018, was the NCAA Tournament most outstanding player. Did not allow a goal in the NCAA Tournament. And not only the folks in Madison, but the folks at Minnesota United FC really excited about the potential of Dane St. Clair. The fact that they have signed him and have him in the system to develop. Now Madison more patient on the ball. Broken up by Andrew Mullen and a handball whistled and a restart coming from Madison FC. First season of USL League One, third tier of American soccer. And the USL as a whole just continues to grow. And expansion expected again for 2020. Where the league has come over the last four seasons. Leaps and bounds, not only at the championship level, but now, of course, with the launching of USL League One. More talent staying home, whereas in years past, they've opted to go overseas. Keeping professional homegrown talent in the States. And building clubs in these smaller communities like Chattanooga that are hungry for a pro franchise. Of course, Chattanooga does have the lookouts, the minor league baseball team up the road, but to bring a professional soccer franchise in the USL, great crowd on hand in support for the first ever home game in the USL era for the Red Wolves. And likewise in Madison, Wisconsin, Daryl Shore with his 25 years of coaching experience at the helm. And he brings a wealth of MLS experience as well. 15 years as an assistant for the Chicago Fire as well as RSL. And there's an expectation in Madison to be good right away because with Daryl Shore at the helm, He's taken his teams to the postseason in 17 of 23 years as a coach at the professional level. And Don Smart turns it back. Perhaps danger building for Madison. A chip and handled by Alex Mangles. And the crowd appreciating that play. First real opportunity in these opening 10 minutes. Cheeky opportunity for Mason Toye on loan from Minnesota United. Former Indiana University standout. He's only 20 years old. Played his freshman season, was the Big Ten Freshman of the Year at Indiana last season. Zayed 
wide for Beatty. Red Wolves continue to aggressively mount an attack. Great defense, no whistle, play on. And Toye, again, into the box. And a whistle and a foul. And a free kick coming for forward Madison FC. And there was the speed for Mason Toye. Had 10 goals in his freshman campaign at Indiana University last season. And now our first look at Josiel Nunez on loan from Panamanian side Universitario. The highest division in Panama. This is his first season in the United States. Might he have some magic in the right foot to score the first goal in franchise history. Opening 15 minutes here in Chattanooga. Nunez goes for goal and just over the top bar. Nunez gave Mangles something to think about here. Couple of feet over the bar, curling, just couldn't get those last few rotations to come down and really challenge Mangles. But after the Red Wolves dominated the first 10 minutes, Madison with some chances in the last five. Manley gets it past Beatty. That's a fun little matchup on the left side. Beatty, of course, in his first season back in the United States in quite some time. Had been playing in Cork City in the League of Ireland. Has won league championships with Cork City. And we're in the captain's band this season for Tim Hankinson. J.C. Banks, Manley playing it back. And a whistle in the midfield. Daniel Chesky awarding the first card of the night. It's a yellow. And I believe that has gone against Josiel Nunez. Indeed it has. So the first booking of the night. And it goes against forward Madison Football Club. Just left that foot out a little bit too long and a good sell on the side of the Red Wolves. And a restart coming. Fifteen minutes down in the first half. Some chances for both teams, but nothing too threatening. But perhaps now the Red Wolves building an attack. Here's a ball looking for Zayed, and there is St. Clair hauling it down. Drafted seventh overall in this year's draft. Out of Maryland, the six foot five, 21 year old. Great reach. So excited to have him in the organization. And a ticky tacky foul. 
on Connor Doyle. Ball guided back by Zaguro. Yuro Toyama. Banks keeps it in. And just a bit too far for Toyama. And it goes back to the Red Wolves, led by Tim Hankinson. And as we talked about a bit earlier, he's had plenty of experience building clubs from the ground up. This is the third club that he's helped build here in Chattanooga. He was the first coach of San Antonio of the North American Soccer League back in 2012. He helped build the Charleston Battery back in the early 90s. And in his first season in San Antonio in 2012, helped the club to 13 wins and a regular season title. So expectations high in Chattanooga, especially with the roster that he's been able to build in his first season. The likes of Stephen Beatty, Connor Doyle with MLS experience, Eamon Zayed, many national caps and great experience. Here's a ball sneaking through, a chance. And great defense as Paulo Jr. looked for a minute to have an open look on that, and it goes out for a corner. Beautiful ball. And unbelievable defense from Vangel Zaguro and Leo Fola, both there to deflect it out. First corner for Madison. Yes. And out for a throw, Josiel Nunez. And it goes off his leg and back to the Red Wolves. Quick throw in. And here comes Steven Beattie. Looking for Eamon Zayed. Doing well to keep it in possession. Caparelli losing it and it goes back to the Flamingos. You might be thinking, Flamingos. Not an average sports name. The Pink Plastic Lawn Flamingo. That's what it's named after the pseudo city bird of Madison, which became so after a prank played by the student government at UW Madison back in 1979. It kind of stuck in the ad group that was tasked with coming up with a logo for Madison. Wanted to have some local flavor and it won by a landslide over some of the other names that they had come up with. Fans really getting behind that pink and blue logo for Madison. And they've certainly been more aggressive here over the last 10 minutes. And Daryl Shore, the manager for forward Madison, said, you know, we've kind of taken on this identity in our own name. We have a forward way of thinking. We want to play in our opponent's half of the field. And maybe not necessarily pressing all of the time, but possessing with penetrating balls. There is Cito Sione. Steered clear. Now a dangerous opportunity. Sione walled off. Back to Zaguro. Twisting and turning. And a chip into the box and headed out for a corner kick.
Sito Sayoni, the 30 year old from Miami, dual citizenship, just putting Euro to Toyama in a blender, and it goes out for a corner kick. Stephen Beattie to take it. Wearing the captain's band, scored the club's first goal last week. And headed wide. And it'll go out for a throw for the Red Wolves. Great support on hand in all four corners of David Stanton Field tonight. The club's home opener in U.S. Sound League One. Both coaches sort of echoing each other in our phone conversations in the build up to this match. Even though they've played an entire preseason, that only prepares you so much for competition once you get into your own league in a regular season play against other professionals. Many of these teams playing local colleges and colleges around their respective regions trying to get as prepared as possible for the first season of League One, but all of these rosters are new. And for the most part, many of these teams dealing with players coming in even a week or two before the start of the season. And so how does that affect the chemistry of the team where certain players are playing? Coaches still sort of figuring that out for both teams. Certainly it is a long season, both at the championship level and here in USL League One. Madison playing its first regular season game and Daryl Shore said, look, we've come into this match with the mindset that we're behind six points. One of only a couple of teams that has yet to play a league match until tonight. And so playing with a sense of urgency, at least that's the hope from the technical staff. Angles, the keeper for the Timbers USL championship team last season helped the squad earn its first ever USL playoff appearance in club history. Here's a dangerous ball and handled by St. Clair. Beatty was barreling down the Wiley veteran. Twenty five minutes gone in this opening half from Chattanooga. And over the last 10 minutes or so, forward Madison has really been the aggressor. Forward Madison with four players in the starting 11 tonight on loan from Minnesota United.
this season making that affiliation official. Of course you had the Madison 56ers in town. But this is the highest level of soccer that Madison has had in terms of professional history. Of course, University of Wisconsin on the men's side, tremendous in the Big Ten. And the city of Madison rallying around the Badgers, but now to have this professional side as well in town. A great sports town. And plenty of supporters for the Flamingos. Angel Zaguro, a ball in, looking for Beatty, and headed wide. Sione. Pressure from the Red Wolves. Sione knocks it out, and a goal kick coming now for Dane St. Clair. Don Smart. J.C. Banks playing it back. Madison has been very patient in the buildup so far in this first half. 15 minutes left in the first 45. Great crowd on hand tonight in Chattanooga. The league's, the team's first game at home in USL League One play. Packed house at David Stanton Field. Thanks. Can the Red Wolves get something going? First five minutes owned by Chattanooga. Since then, spurts of pressure, but nothing really terribly threatening for the Madison keeper, Dane St. Clair. Lefi Dos Reyes in the midfield. Brings a composure on the ball and is able to dictate pace. But back to Madison. Here's Toye. And deflected from behind. The recovery tonight so far in this first half and the Red Wolves spot on. Here's a ball. Toyama fighting for it. And Zagoro 
somehow maintaining possession and gets it through Toyama. And a takedown in the midfield gives us a chance to look back at that last play. Zakuro somehow with the ball on his foot like a string, able to get around Toyama. Here it is one more time. That last contact. And it's out for a corner kick, and it'll be taken by Madison's Josiel Nunez. 14 caps with the Panamanian national team. He's on loan from a club in Panama's first division. He's 26 years old, his first time playing in the States. Low ball across and handled easily by the Red Wolves' back line. Sito Sioni not pleased with the foul in the midfield. Daniel Chesky signaling him to come forward, and he's been booked. A yellow card for the Red Wolves in the 33rd minute of the first half. And now Smart getting testy with Dos Reyes. Some chippiness here in the first half. Sioni tracking it down. Well, I don't know. That seemed like a bit of excessive or not excessive on the hands of Sioni, but nonetheless booked and now a yellow for each side tonight. Josiel Nunez with a yellow for forward Madison and now Sioni a yellow for the Red Wolves. Can Chattanooga get possession of the ball back and maintain it? Sione momentarily had it, loses it, and it's back to forward Madison. Looking wide for Smart and just out of his reach. A good run from the native of Kingston, Jamaica. The first signing for Daryl Shore. Said he took out a pen and paper when he took over the head coaching job, understanding that he would have to build a core group. And then the supporting cast around that, he said Don Smart was one of the first three players he thought of when trying to put together his roster. Beattie winning it for the Red Wolves. Dixon coming up, restart coming, and a free kick opportunity with just under 10 minutes to play in the opening half. Here it is one more time, Dixon and Manley getting tangled up, and Manley beat, throws him to the ground. And it'll be Walefi Dos Reyes, 25-year-old from Sao Paulo, Brazil, taking the free kick. Nine assists last season for Barretos. Club in Brazil. 
has played in the USL with the Slope Park Rangers back in the States. Then steered out. Zaguro, fancy footwork tonight from Bonjell. And could not keep it in play. Good Sione, and it goes back to forward Madison. Red Wolves with numbers. Dixon. Beatty. Double teamed, turned away by Manley. Throw in coming. Opening five minutes and the closing five minutes. All Red Wolves close up there of Stephen Beatty. Delighted to be back in the United States. Sort of a revenge campaign for him. Played his college soccer here stateside at Northern Kentucky. Never panned out in his first few professional seasons. Dealt with an ACL tear. Went back to his native Ireland where he became a star in the League of Ireland. And when this opportunity came to get back to the States, he said it was too good to pass up because he's always had it in the back of his mind that he wanted to give it another crack here. Nunez goes down, still grabbing at his right ankle. No card issued from our referee, Daniel Chesky. Nunez has been involved in a couple of physical stretches of play in the midfield tonight. Certainly will we'll add some time on the back end of this first half. Take one more look at that. Nunez hitting the turf. This time, Beatty clipping his back heel. No booking, though, just a restart. A little over five minutes left before stoppage time. JC Banks trying to build for the back. Forward Madison has had a couple of looks in front of net. There's Toye, tracked down by Dixon. Now Manley into the box. Michotti. And the shot from Paulo Jr. harmlessly into the hands of Alex Mangles.
Nunez winning it back momentarily, kept in for the Red Wolves. And now back out, and a foul is called. Whistle blown by Daniel Chesky, and a free kick in a position of potential danger here in the closing moments of the first half for Chattanooga. It'll be Dos Reyes to take it. And instead, Zaguro, low ball. And deflected wide, and it is out for a corner kick. Short corner, back to Beattie. Steering it in with the right and headed on. Caparelli, Sione, and Smart winning it back for Madison. And then cleared up the field. Good possession for Chattanooga to close the first half. Either side, though, really testing the opposing keeper. Smart. Banks. Michotti. Can Smart do something with these closing moments? So the first 45. Back to Michotti. Madison looking for that pocket of space. Just a minute of stoppage time here in the first 45 minutes, despite some of the bookings and stoppages of play. And here's one more. Back to the Red Wolves. With under 60 seconds left in the first half, you'd imagine Tim Hankinson's club would be fine just sitting on the ball here. A flurry of possession in the final 10 minutes for the Red Wolves. Didn't lead to anything necessarily, but certainly gave Madison something to think about. And now Smart dribbling it out. And Smart, after the whistle, taking down a player in the midfield. And now how will Daniel Chesky handle this? A yellow card has been issued to Don Smart after the first half concluded.
And that player that went down was Caparelli. Second booking of the half for Madison. And you see there Connor Tobin chatting things over with Chesky. No score after 45 minutes from Chattanooga. 45 minutes left in the Red Wolves' home opener of USL League One play. We'll be back after this. Time at David Stanton Field in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The Red Wolves playing in their home opener for the 2019 USL League One season. And forward Madison FC's first ever game as a club in USL League One. It's been a fun first week in USL League One play. Inaugural game at Tormenta Park last Friday. Marco Micheletto up the sideline, drawing defenders. He scores the goal for Tormenta. That's all they needed in front of a packed crowd with the USL League One trophy on hand. Look at that stuff from Tormenta's supporter group. Then at City Stadium in Richmond, Virginia, USL League One, a giveaway. Red Army disorganized on the back line. And an opportunity in front of net, seized. And the first goal of the season for Richmond captain Maxi Rodriguez. Lansing, though, proved to be a little too much as the game wore along. 
scoring three goals in the contest and winning by one on the road against the Richmond Kickers. Quick look in at Orlando City B after a year off and playing Montverde. Down three nothing, the OCB side gets its first goal of the season from Christopher Wusu in the 56th minute. Long pass leading to goal, but FC Tucson coming away with the victory. And then over at Toyota Stadium in Frisco, Texas. The performance of the week out of the pro debut of Ricardo Pepe at Toyota Stadium, home of FC Dallas in the MLS. A fun opportunity for the folks here in League One to play in an MLS stadium. He got this goal in the 62nd minute after a goal in the 13th. And a tremendous performance from Guillermo Delgado as well. And then North Texas defeating this Chattanooga team 3-2 at home. A couple of own goals led up by Chattanooga. The day belonged to North Texas with the giveaways in the back. We'll check this past Wednesday's scores and look at the weekend ahead after this break as we take you to Birmingham and a new side with a cool, make that hot pitch side tradition. It's halftime here in Chattanooga. Red Wolves love chicken. And follow Chat Red Wolves and Chick-fil-A. The winner will be announced. If there's one thing with USL Championship clubs, it's that they have a way to make the experience unique to their clubs. I'm on site here at PBVA Compass Field in Birmingham to talk a little bit about this iron factory they have on site. I'm joined by Marshall, the director of metal arts at Sloss Furnaces. So Marshall, first off, tell us what an ingot is. Okay, so an ingot is basically just a unit of iron. Okay. So it's just a way to make the iron portable and mobile and in a manner that can be sold. Okay. Um, so the process that we're going to be doing in game is a little bit different than the casting process. Uh, this is a forge setup. So it's typically okay. used for blacksmithing. Uh, you're typically not trying to completely melt what you're working with. You're just okay. raising the temperature enough that it can be malleable. Okay. So what we're going to be doing throughout the game is taking one of these in our forge and getting it up to temperature red hot and having that on standby so that when we score a goal, we'll take it out of the forge, over to the ingot, and we have a special die with a spark on it off of the Legion logo. Right. Uh, and that'll be placed on it and struck with a hammer. It's a two-man operation. When we're ready, the assistant will take that They'll take the die and put it in place, and then the other person will strike it with the hammer. So each goal that's scored will get a mark, hopefully a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so we have one for each game. Okay. So to have the team that they're playing, and so throughout the season, throughout the years, we'll begin to accumulate these and create an iron wall back here with each ingot from the games. That That's going to be amazing. Yeah. How cool is that for people to come in, too, and kind of see this little you know, characteristic of yeah. Birmingham. Yeah. It's, that, that's awesome. Hammer down! <laughs> you know they can tell how hot the steel is by the color. Burning up, red hot! <laughs>
Back at the halftime in USL League One, presented by Transcard Global FinTech Platform, as we take a look at the news and notes from week one in the USL League One. South Georgia's Tormento FC, Alex Morrell, scored the first goal in League One history last Friday. His name forever etched in the record books. Player of the Week, North Texas's Ricardo Pepe collected a hat trick in his professional debut Saturday against Chattanooga. And then Toronto FC2 and forward Madison make debuts this week. We're seeing Madison right now against Chattanooga, hosting its first match in League One history. Scoreboard around the league, Reno over Austin in its first season, 2-1. to one. Richmond kickers in Tormenta. 0-0, Lansing Ignite on top, 1-0 after the first half against Greenville. Lansing Ignite with a great crowd on hand. Highlights from the first half in Chattanooga. No score on the board, but yet plenty of chances for both sides. Started early for Madison with Michotti sort of flicking a ball on that. This was probably the best chance they had. Toye into the hands of Alex Mangles. And then Toye again getting around, winning the free kick opportunity. Josiel Nunez just high with this shot. Something to think about though for Alex Mangles. A lot of what you're seeing right here is Madison. This was a beautiful ball through and I'll tell you, the defensive recovery from the Red Wolves was spot on in the first half. They, too, had some chances, a couple of corner kicks for Chattanooga, nothing doing. Mangles was tested certainly more so than the young keeper on the side of Madison, Dane St. Clair. Zaguro, nifty footwork on the near side. Dixon winning a free kick. That was the first free kick of the night for the Red Wolves, and it came towards the back end. A couple of cards for Madison in the first half. One for the Red Wolves, one final push at the end. And as we transition you to halftime stats, they had one more free kick opportunity. Still no score after 45 with 45 left. First half stats presented by Transcard Global FinTech Platform. There you have it, 15 shots, only three on target for Madison, four on target for Chattanooga. And the interesting stat there is possession because Chattanooga really dominated the possession in the first five or 10 minutes of the first half and then the back end of the 10, final 10 minutes. But it was Madison in the middle of that first half doing most of the work and they controlled possession for the majority of the time. Forty five down, forty five to go from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Mountain range just beyond the stadium here at Chattanooga Christian School, playing at a local high school as the fifty five hundred seat st soccer specific stadium is being built for the Red Wolves to play next season. That is the hope anyway to open up at a new facility next season. It'll have all the bells and whistles, a weight room, a training facility. Tim Hankinson, part of the reason they brought him to Chattanooga is his experience building clubs. Not just in terms of a roster, but has the knowledge of the business side as well. Understanding ticket sales, understanding facilities and how to acquire the necessities to build a professional club. And, you know, it's interesting, Stephen Beattie, the captain for the Red Wolves, was talking earlier last week. This is a guy who played in the League of Ireland for Cork City, and he said he's never felt better, though, being in the States at 30 years old because the recovery over here, even in the first season of League One, is like nothing he's seen before or experienced, having access to... Whirlpools and Norma Tech boots and cryotherapy, things that he had never had at Cork City. And that's all in the first season under Tim Hankinson. No score after the first 45 minutes. 
Certainly Daryl Shore has to be pleased with how his team organized in that first half. First game that they've played in the regular season against a league opponent. And Madison looked apart in the first 45 minutes. Now the question is who breaks through first to get the first goal of this match? It'll be Madison FC ball, 45 down, 45 to go. Here from Chattanooga. Great crowd on hand in Chattanooga's first home match of USL League One history. Great support group from around the city. And of course, anytime a city in the first year of a club's existence, they vote for a new stadium, 5,500 seats. You know that the city is excited to have this club in town. Another professional team of the minor league variety. They do have the Chattanooga Lookouts, a minor league baseball team up the road. Chattanooga FC, the third tier of American soccer in USL League One. And the city has come out in full support tonight for the Red Wolves. Trying to get its first win of the season. 0-1 to begin league play after a 3-2 defeat to North Texas last week. And certainly they've looked much better defensively. They gave up two own goals last week. And even though Madison has gotten behind the back line a couple of times, they've recovered well. And they do again here, winning it back on a foul and a restart coming for the Red Wolves. Glad to have you with us on this beautiful Saturday night from David Stanton Field. Final four might be going on, but we've got USL League One soccer to play. A beautiful night in Tennessee. Of course, probably a lot of the folks around here, maybe not playing paying as close attention to the Final Four after their volunteers were knocked out. Surprisingly, in the Sweet 16 weekend, kind of an interesting Final Four left. And Virginia just knocked off Auburn in the closing seconds. Kyle Guy knocking down three free throws. So Virginia goes from the first ever one seed to get knocked out by a 16 last season to making it to the national championship a year later. What a season Tony Bennett has had as the head coach and what a turnaround for the Cavaliers. Madison building. They had 60% of the possession in the first 45 minutes and have continued that here in the opening five of the second half. There is Jose Nunez. Wide for Toye. And into the hands of Alex Mangles. I've not seen much of Eamon Zayed tonight. For the Red Wolves, he's been kept quiet. I've seen Stephen Beattie on the ball a few times, but mainly coming in restarts. Zayed from Dublin, Ireland, as a Stephen Beattie. Spent last year with the Charlotte Independence, but was with Hankinson during his time leading Indy 11 to a Nassau championship in the spring of 2016 and has a nose for goal. 
But we have not seen him with the ball at his feet tonight. But maybe one or two times and none were in scoring positions. And quite frankly, the best scoring chances of the night, a trio for Madison in the first half. Mason Toye and Josiel Nunez with a couple of looks on net. Maybe a step away, step or two away from getting that scoreless break. Madison will play its first home match next week. And we have a whistle. Daniel Chesky has blown play dead over on the far side. to restart and it's Madison FC football. <laughs> Zayed gives it off to Dixon. Zaguro and how about that defensive effort from Toyama stopping him dead in his tracks and it's back to the Flamingos some pressure now for Red Wolves SC trying to create something Dixon Sneaking it through. Beatty. Walled off. And that goes out for a throw. Red Wolves in the all red. Madison in the all white. And a throw in. Going for Connor Doyle. 42 appearances in the MLS for DC United. Spent last season with the Jacksonville Armada and the year before with Puerto Rico. Dangerous ball in and cleared away. Red Wolves starting to threaten. Here's Beatty. Right foot, foot. Oh, and Sione just over the top bar. Best look of the night for the Red Wolves. Cheeky ball in from Stephen Beatty. Looking for Zayed, who used the head. Sione just maybe a bit quick with the touch. But finally, we get to see Zayed with the ball in a dangerous area. And Dixon winning it back for the Red Wolves. That play for the Red Wolves is all started by Dixon winning it back on the right side. Daniel Chesky not having any of that from Dixon. <laughs> the 24-year-old from Jamaica, the leader of the back line. And Tim Hankins had said, really the thing that stands out to you about Richard Dixon is his composure and his experience. Five seasons in the USL, despite only being 24 years old. 50 matches with the OKC Energy in the last two seasons at the championship level. And leading the back line here in USL League One. And a takedown from Stephen Beatty. Just a talking to from Janiel Chesky. No booking. It was Paulo Jr. trying to turn it back into the midfield and Beatty got there just a bit behind the ball. Yeah. 
so a restart coming for J.C. Banks. Then he goes wide. Again. Madison trying to build. Perhaps a counter though coming for the Red Wolves. Banks turns it back. Beatty wide for Zayed. Start. Toyama going down. And now Daniel Chesky running in. Connor Doyle not pleased. Nunez, far post, and headed away by Andrew Mullen. Throw in coming from Madison. Mishodi. Down on the near side, Stephen Beatty. And the Red Wolves faithful do not appreciate it. Beatty still down face first. Daniel Chesky getting an earful from the supporters on the near side. Mashodi certainly did come in hard. Didn't look to be vicious. He had a mind for ball, and Beatty. Could do nothing but laugh it off. The former star at Cork City in his first season back in the States in quite some time. Played in the Persian Golf Premier League in 2018 after helping lead Cork City to a League of Ireland championship in the previous seasons. Has Champions League qualifying experience under his belt. The 30-year-old from Dublin, Ireland, back in the States and captaining Tim Hankinson squad. A bit of footwork from Stephen Beatty. So calm on the ball, running it back for the Red Wolves. And now building yet again. Sione to Beatty. And he was looking wide for Connor Doyle. John Caparelli in the area as well. Manley looking for some movement. And really after Madison dominated possession in the first half, they've been a bit stumped here as time has worn along in the final 45. Red Wolves have certainly been the aggressor. And a takedown in the midfield gives it back to Madison. Zaguro not taking a liking to the call from Daniel Chesky. Nonetheless, back to Michodi and the Flamingos. Michodi. Not 
got the ball he wanted, and now numbers moving forward for the Red Wolves and stopped by J.C. Banks. That was a significant defensive stop, I think, from Banks. The Red Wolves are mounting an attack, and now Manley with it in the offensive half. The Madison roster is an interesting one. You've got a mix of veterans who've played in the championship in the MLS, in second and third tiers in European divisions. And then, of course, you've got the youngsters on loan from Minnesota United. Young men who have never played professional soccer before, and if they have, maybe just a year or two. There's a ball into the midst of Alex Mangles. More so for the Red Wolves, it's a lot of veterans with a sprinkling of youth. But even the youth for the Red Wolves have played in some form or another, whether it's semi-professional or professional in their native countries. Certainly Tim Hankinson, more than Daryl Shore, has built a, a veteran-laden group. And I think part of that is Hankinson's experience in the USL. Shore comes from the MLS where he spent the majority of his professional career, 15 seasons as an assistant between Ch Chicago Fire and Real Salt Lake. And of course, with the affiliation with Minnesota, Shore getting more of his players from Minnesota on loan. And if you're Minnesota in the front office, what a great way to break in your young stars, giving them experience to play alongside guys who have played for championships, albeit at lower divisions, but still years of experience. Guys like Don Smart on the back line who could sort of bring these young players along and at a pace that allows them to grow. I think that's probably the the best part about this first season of USL League One. And of course, we know it'll continue to grow next year and in years to come. But this really gives an opportunity for some of the young players who are maybe a bit green to the professional side of things, coming from the college ranks, maybe for just a year or two, signing their first or second professional contract. This gives them an opportunity to get some real minutes Whereas at the championship or maybe the MS, MLS level, they'd spend most of the time on the bench or at the very most coming in as late game substitutions. Now they're starting. And you look at this team for Madison at least, and guys like Carter Manley, Dane St. Clair, Mason Toye, only 21, only 20 years old rather, and only one season of college under his belt. He's getting a start tonight for Madison. And has had a couple of good looks on that. No real threatening opportunities in the last 10 minutes, though, for either side. The game has gotten more physical, though, in the middle. Just an exciting time in American professional soccer. And you hear that from guys like Stephen Beattie for the Red Wolves, the captain, the 30-year-old who's played in just about every professional league worldwide, multiple countries, anywhere from Canada to the Persian Gulf Super League to Ireland, and now back here in the States in USL League One. And he said he can really feel the passion and the growth of US professional soccer and you're seeing more guys from Europe come over to extend their careers here and maybe even for some to grow their careers here with a hope of getting to the MLS. Banks turning it back. Zayed tracking it down, but it goes back to Madison. Nearly 20 minutes gone here in the second half. Still no score in Chattanooga. And 
now then, what does Michotti have? Well defended on the back line. Michotti, a bit ambitious. Wanted a deflection, and that is what has been awarded. A corner kick coming, I believe, for forward Madison FC. Tension building at David Stanton Field. Even though the Red Wolves have had the majority of possession in the second half, you just get the sense that Madison has had the better opportunities, the luckier bounces. John Caparelli helped up under his own power now though. Taking the corner kick is Hiro Toyama from the Laredo Heat last season. Overshoots it just a little bit. Well defended and handled easily by the Red Wolves back line. Sold for the foul. Chattanooga subbing in Juan Mare for Cito Sione. Here's an opportunity. Syed buries it for the Red Wolves. And he breaks the score this time. Syed, we talked about it earlier. Opportunities tonight with the ball at his feet. Perhaps just the second one in the, in the no. area. And he scores in the 67th minute. And is assisted by Stephen Beatty. How about that? A couple of Dublin, Ireland natives linking up on the pitch in the first home match in Chattanooga club history. And they break the scoreless tie. 1 0 lead for the Red Wolves. the assist, Zayed with the goal. And it's Eamon Zayed's first goal of the season. What kind of a response does Madison FC have? We'll get a chance to see right away as they head out for a corner kick and taking it once more, Yuro Toyama. Fan is, have really come alive at David Stanton Field tonight. Low ball headed out by Beatty. And a throw coming.
There's a dangerous opportunity. Don Smart with it at his feet on the right side. Player down for Madison. Michotti has it wrestled away, but Madison maintains possession. Nunez, ball in, looking for Michotti. And Paulo Jr. has it saved by Mangles. One more look at that ball in. Beautiful pass from Nunez. And just off his head, Paul Jr. maybe not squaring it up the way that he would have liked. Substitution for Madison coming on. Zaire Bartley for Euro Toyoma. Bartley, the 21-year-old from the Bronx in his third professional season. First year back in the States. After splitting time last season between New York Cosmos B and the third division club team in the Czech Republic. has a nose for goal, and certainly that is exactly what Daryl Shore needs at this point as Zayed tries to track it down and headed back by Connor Tobin. So a pair of substitutions, one on each side, coming here in the final 25 minutes. There's a ball up for Don Smart, and Mangles coming off his line to make the play. Dixon, Toye, who's been quiet in the second half after a couple of opportunities in the first 45 minutes. Perhaps the combination of Toye and Bartley, a couple of East Coast young stars linking up. Toye, of course, former Big Ten freshman of the year from Indiana University. Scored 10 goals last year in his only season at Indiana. And here is Paolo Jr. He's been all over the pitch tonight. Mishodi, Manley to Banks. Building and handled by Connor Doyle. And couldn't quite handle and it goes back to Madison a little bit under 20 minutes left in the second half Madison had a chance at a quick response on a corner kick now trying to build from the back Zayed. Right now, his goal, the deciding factor. Get a look there at Tim Hankinson, the head coach for the Red Wolves, looking to even the slate. Here in game two of the USL League One season for the Red Wolves. And for Madison, first regular season USL One 
match in club history. Jody dancing. Played back to Banks. Nunez swarmed and won back by Stephen Beatty, and here he comes. Beatty has a runner in Mare. Didn't see him, and Don Smart wins it back for Madison. Boy, that could have been a dangerous play, and two goals up with less than 20 minutes to play. Might have sealed the deal for the Red Wolves. But here comes Michotti and Madison. Marin pass. Zayed, ball winner in the words of Tim Hankinson. Mare playing it back. Tug of the jersey from Don Smart goes uncalled as it maintains possession for the Red Wolves. Looking for Zayed once more. And he wins it back. Great effort from Zayed. There's a long ball ahead. Manley back with it on the left side. Don Smart. Deflected out of play and a throw coming from Madison. Time winding down for the Flamingos in the first match of club history. Can they find the equalizer? Slip through. Here's a chance. Dixon wide. Zayed just wide of net. And I'm sure he'd love one more crack at that one. That could have been the game closer. Look at that fancy footwork from Mare. Dixon a ball through, finding the foot of Zayed and maybe. If he had had just one split second more to settle that ball, maybe a different result. Nonetheless, still down one. And Madison trying to gather and organize. certainly have not taken their foot off the gas. They've continued to press on, but patiently. It's been a different, more consistent, organized attack here in the second half from Tim, Tim Hankins inside. And maybe even 
more impressive has been the defensive effort, something that he challenged his club from last week. The ball onto the pitch, and Don Smart handles that. This is a side that gave up two own goals against North Texas. That has been shored up quickly. And now a run from Paulo Jr. Into the area, Jr. Low driving ball and Mangles handles. <laughs> Paulo Jr. trying to create. He's been so active tonight. Ambitious effort and a player down for the Red Wolves on the far side being attended to by the training staff. Cramps in the early season. Meanwhile, Madison, a substitution. Brandon Eaton will come on for Jeffrey Michodi. That player walking off, by the way, Vangel Zaguro. So we'll await to see if he has a substitution come in. But in the meantime, Brandon Eaton comes on for Madison. Less than 10 minutes left in regulation. Mare fighting for it, and it goes back to Madison. Don Smart bringing it forward. Josiel Nunez has been a bit quiet in the second half. Great effort all night long from Madison's Paulo Jr. He's had a couple of shots on net. But nothing to open the scoring for Madison. Junior, captain in the box, Banks. <laughs> Joseph Soto comes on for Chattanooga. John Caparelli comes off. A nice night for the 23-year-old from Buenos Aires, Joseph Soto, the 30-year-old from Fort Worth, Texas. On for the Red Wolves as they try to hang on and secure the first win in club history. Up ahead from Nunez, looking for Manley, kept in, ball across. And out for a goal kick. Dangerous ball, testy moments for Alex Mangles. Beautiful job, first of all, by Manley to keep it in, and then an opportunity, door closed, and you really have to credit the back line of the Red Wolves tonight, especially in the second half. They've kept the stress to a minimum for that man right there, Alex Mangles. Six minutes away from another clean sheet. He had six last season with the Portland Timbers USL Championship side. 
Madison not going quietly into the night, though. And a hold and a restart coming. Madison will have a free kick. And Chesky reaches into her back pocket, and a booking has been issued. Fourth yellow card of the night. Didn't quite get a chance to see who that was on. That was on Vangel Zaguro. A 24-year-old Albanian. And now a free kick for Madison. Not much time remaining to find the equalizer. Back post and out of reach. And Alex Mangles perfectly content to let the clock melt away just a bit for the Red Wolves. Trying to secure three points and get back to level after two games in League One play. Bartley. A late game substitution. Might he have the magic for Madison? Wide to Manley. And Mare punts it into the middle. Two game road swing for Madison before they will open up a friendly at home at Bree Stevens Field. Technically the first home game of the regular season, although it's not in League One play. Fun little competition with the University of Wisconsin's men's soccer program right there in town. Their first League One match at home isn't until April 27th, so the fans have some waiting to do, but at least the anticipation of making a League One start finally coming to a close tonight in their first match in club history in the USL. Bartley poked away. Ball ahead for Zayed. Tobin fighting for it. Zayed with the right. And just wide. <laughs> Tell you what, Eamon Zayad, after a quiet first half, has found himself with the ball at his feet in the final third a few times, giving Dane St. Clair something to think about. And of course, his goal around the 66 minute the deciding factor right now although a corner kick coming in the closing moments and it's Don Smart to take it for Madison everybody coming forward for the Flamingos no indication yet of how much stoppage time we may have Smart in the middle and deflected out steered clear by Olafi Dos Reyes and now Manley has to rebuild. Great crowd on hand tonight for Chattanooga. The home opener in club history.
Dos Reyes, physical defender, steering it back to Manley. Time not on Madison's side. Bartley back to Smart. Now into the middle and perhaps a chance and deflected by Beatty. Junior. Nifty in the box and cut away by Dixon. And that might just do it for the Red Wolves. Maybe time for just one more attack. Three minutes of stoppage time, so still an opportunity for Madison FC to tie this. Here's Eaton. Bartley. Connor Tobin, the lone defender, back right now for Madison. Certainly leaving itself susceptible to a counterattack. And play back to St. Clair. cramp situation. A warm evening here in Chattanooga tonight. Finally, we can say that spring is here. Training staff coming out. Even Alex Mangles helping out his teammate. Bit of a hamstring for, I believe, that is Vangel Zaguro. I hope it's just a cramp. Didn't see anything that would make you think it was anything more severe. Certainly we hope just a cramp for Zaguro. He stayed on the pitch for all 92 plus minutes tonight. Final seconds winding down for the Red Wolves. And it looks like they will come away with a victory in their inaugural home match of USL League One play. Sending these Red Wolves faithful home with a good taste in their mouths on this Saturday night. One final push. Red Wolves waiting for the final whistle. Madison playing on. Perhaps one final opportunity. I have not seen an indication yet from a referee. And now a chance into the 18 and across and wide. And with that cramping issue from Zaguro, perhaps just a bit more time added by Daniel Chesky. Wide again for Paolo Jr. Got to give Madison credit. They've continued to pepper. Red Wolves desperately trying to hang on here for three points. Manley, far side. Looking for an opportunity, taken down, no call, and it's back to the Red Wolves. And that will do it.
the Red Wolves. Three points, winners, and the first home match in club history. Our man of the match tonight, presented by Transcard Global FinTech Platform, Eamon Zayed giving the Red Wolves the lone goal of the match, his first of the season. And the Red Wolves are 1 0 winners tonight in Chattanooga. Back one final time from David Stanton Field in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The Red Wolves of Chattanooga. Winners, 1-0, three points back to level in League One play. Taking down forward Madison FC in its first ever League One match. Let's take a look at the highlights tonight. Certainly plenty of opportunities for both sides. Quite frankly, Madison dominated in the first half, but it was Chattanooga proving to be just a bit more opportunistic. Toye, a chance, perhaps one of the best opportunities of the night for Madison. They certainly had the majority of the opportunities in the first half. This shot from Nunez, just a bit over. Not enough to make Mangles sweat it out. This might have been the best opportunity. Paolo Jr., but great defensive effort from Fola. And then back the other way, Zaguro with the fancy footwork. He was spectacular tonight. Played 92 of the 93 minutes and was outstanding on the back line. And you really have to credit the defensive effort from the back four tonight. Here was an opportunity late. Zayed, that was the first opportunity that we saw Eamon Zayed have the ball at his feet in the final third. Started to get into a rhythm and it paid off later in the game. 
Here is Michotti with a shot just high. Not as many opportunities in the second half for Madison. Here is Zayed's goal with the right. The first for him this season. And that was the deciding factor for the Red Wolves. Coming away with its first win in club history at home. Getting three points. And Alex Mangles a clean sheet. The seventh in the last two seasons. Had six last year with the Portland Timbers two squad in the USL Championship. Zayed peppering the net late in the second half. This was one final push from Madison. Have to credit that club. A lot of youthful players on that team, and you know Daryl Shore would have loved to have come away with three points, but certainly proud he can be of this team's effort. They'll head back on the road again next week, but uh, Chattanooga winners at home. Taking a look at the uh, full-time stats. Still possession for forward Madison. They won that battle, but the four shots on target and the one goal for Chattanooga, just a bit more opportunistic in the final third. And they come away with a 1-0 victory in Chattanooga. Thanks so much for joining us for this League One presentation of USL Soccer so long from Chattanooga, Tennessee. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League, League One, cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League, League One.